could figure it out. Like. <laughs> oh, you know sure. what? Here so she can, she can Ryan, we're hearing your phone calls, so mute yourself on the screen there, okay? Please. How long ago was that? <laughs> he's just on a phone call. No, he's on a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Oila. Thanks for calling. Do you mind muting um, the guests that are Hello. Yes. Status. Just follow back up with her one more time. Yeah, mute everybody. He's not listening. Except oh, good. Or, or maybe don't, don't mute Eden and I. I have a question for you, Olia. I'm not muting you guys. Okay, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Olia, can you tell me for sure how to say your last name? Is it Lucina? It's Loisina. It's accent on the first syllable. Loisina. But it, it works either way. Uh, uh, I cannot make Americans say Loisina. <laughs> Loisina. Okay. I, I'm going to slaughter it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it works. I, I am a, I, I am accommodating. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, hey, Amy. Hi, guys. Pretty good number of people so far. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Rich. That's right. Oh, sweet hat, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we just on the beach. <laughs> yeah, Rich is living the life, man. <laughs> it's like palm trees blowing in the wind. Hey, hey Susan. Yeah. Thanks for joining John. us. Hello. Yeah. Oh, good. Stand. I love Morgan Ruby. Yeah. Ruby Morgan. Hi. <laughs> Hello. It's Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> Tracy Morgan Hollingworth, Kathleen Morgan. With an A. <laughs> All right. This is great. What time is it? Um, we're at 4.30, so we're getting close. It is Maybe person. another minute or yeah. so. Yeah. yeah hey, David. David. Hey, David. Hey, David. Oh, my. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, hello. Exciting <laughs> stuff. How do you guys feel about your uh, art packages? Oh, my gosh. So great. Yay. So pretty. I know. You did a freaking awesome job. I didn't think I was going to get one, and so I was really surprised when a box showed up. I was like, yay! <laughs> Figured organizers didn't get one. You have all the colors. Turquoise. So, whomever's going to kick it off, I'd say, you know, respect everybody's time and get going. Get going? Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for joining. This is um, an ASLA virtual event. So uh, Eden Bouchard and me, myself, Brittany Borden, we are uh, the ASLA uh, social chair. So we had met earlier this year and we were trying to come up with all these awesome events that we were going to do. And then our lovely friend COVID hit and decided to make everything go away. So um, we're trying to get creative and see how we could still play a role. Um, and this kind of evolved. It, it started with uh, being just a sketch of your workspace that we tried to make more lively and fun. And then, um, you know, through collaboration with Amy, who Eden will introduce soon, um, we kind of have come to this. So um, we're really lucky. We have a very awesome teacher here for you guys to um, learn from and she's been gracious enough to actually donate her time for you guys so um, give her a big thanks at the end but uh, I'm not sure where she is on your screen but in mine she's in the upper right there she is so her name's Olia Locina and I've slaughtered her last name I'm sure um, but she is the co-founder of Prima Materia Institute in San Diego 
California, um, and she has a master's degree in fine art, and she's known for her unique methods of teaching, um, and you guys are all going to get to experience it today. She, she's really fun. Um, uh, she conducts ongoing online classes, and she helps professionals gain skills, uh, which will help them in their field. So she'll tailor it specifically to the fact that we are landscape architects, and hopefully you'll leave with um, some key takeaways to kind of help you further your, your artist skills in the future. Um, but before we jump in and give, give the uh, camera to Olya Eden, we want to pay special attention to our sponsor. Yeah, thanks, Brittany. I'm Eden's counterpart. I just wanted to thank our sponsor, Amy Mincelli from Anchor Stone. Um, Anchor Stone. Uh, some of you may know Amy. Um, she's been in the architectural industry as a sales representative for 10 years. She's heavily involved with ASLA in our past events, um, even your past sketch events. Uh, she's currently representing Ackerstone. Um, she was responsible for those sketch kits that a couple of you got for today's class. And if you want to check out Ackerstone afterwards, um, reach out to Amy. Any questions, product needs, uh, presentation requests, or anything? Um, I know Amy wanted to say a couple things before we hand it off to you. Oh, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Eden. Hi, guys. Amy here. Um, I know a lot of you guys um, are familiar with me and Ackerstone because you're using our pavers on your product. So thank you for that. Um, if not, as mentioned, um, please check out our products. Feel free to reach out to me. I am the San Diego Architectural Representative. Um, and we're just really excited to be part of this event. Um, as Brittany mentioned, we had planned to do the typical physical sketch call as we have in years past, um, but we are happy to have it be, um, make it happen in a virtual capacity. So it's great. Um, and we're excited. I can't wait to see everybody's um, finished product because I'm sure it'll be a lot a lot better than than mine <laughs> um but yeah I, I, I'll pass it off to Olya now um who's gonna kind of run the show from here and take over hello everybody and welcome to the virtual sketch class my name is Olya Loisana I will be your instructor today and um thank you so much Brittany uh and uh, for your nice introduction and Amy for your um, generous sponsorship. This is going to be very exciting, everybody. Uh, I am very excited to meet you all and welcome to Zoom. Um, so um, we muted everybody and uh, there is a, a feature that you can unmute yourself uh, when we will get to questions and answers. Uh, you will be able to do that. Um, and also, uh, we can use this hand raising feature. You can use this hand raising feature on Zoom, and then I will see that you have a question. Um, so I want to give you first the outline of today's class, what to expect, what, um, how we're going to go uh, in our uh, sketching. I will start with uh, doing a brief demonstration of the things that will be relevant for you to know um, for sketching. Then it will take about 15 minutes. Then I will um, start the sketching exercise and uh, take you step by step through it. And you will be able to follow and create three or more sketches today. So. Uh, in my first demonstration that I will do on the whiteboard that's behind me, so I'll be drawing, you don't have to follow, meaning you don't have to uh, copy what I do, but I recommend for you to just watch and listen because uh, it's going to be relevant for everyone what I will be showing you. And if you try to recreate it, then you will miss things. And it's important not to. Um, then, uh, I will give you time to uh, ask questions, and uh, at the end we will have a little discussion. We will you will share your artwork, and have a chance to speak about your experience. So before we start, I wanted to introduce our material. Uh, mater I mean, not introduce because you're supposed to have all the materials, but I want to make sure that you are prepared. So we have brush markers. 
for one brush marker is enough. Uh, a pencil for B preferably an eraser, a pencil sharpener just in case, a ruler, uh, a set of watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, I hope you have something that you will be able to do washes with. Um, we recommended strong coffee or strong black tea brewed to in very small amount of water and that works as a wash beautifully. So you, if you don't have watercolors, no problem. And you also will need a soft brush, a hairbrush, not very large, not very small, but actually any size, uh, any size will work and uh, a cup with water uh, for uh, washing your brush or wetting your brush more than uh, washing because we're using, we're gonna use just a couple of colors. And just in case uh, sheets of paper towel, in case spills, on or getting uh, rid of extra water on the brush or whatever, wiping your fingers. So it's a good idea to always have it. Also, if you guys uh, did brew some coffee or tea as your wash, you may want to have a tiny, say tiny, uh, cup for um, for that liquid. Uh, and everyone has, I hope, a picture, uh, a printed image of the facade of the San Diego Museum of Art. I chose that because knowing that you are landscape architects, this has architecture and also has all this texture, all these organic forms on it. So it will imitate in a way the texture that you have to deal with in designing um, gardens, parks, and, and so on, because the principle of drawing is actually the same. So um, to uh, to start, I want to say that um, uh, drawing is a prima materia of uh, art making. The drawing is the beginning of everything. Primo Materia in Latin, which is the name of our company, Primo Materia Institute, means the beginning of everything, primary matter. And um, we mean it because we, you start with a drawing and then you get anywhere you want to get. So we train professionals starting with drawing and then uh, uh, people become illustrators, animators, designers, fashion designers, stage designers, uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, but the, uh, the drawing is the, um, uh, gives you the basics. Um, sketching, however, is different from drawing. Sketching is not easier than drawing. Uh, sketching is harder. Uh, drawing can be compared to learning language. So learning to draw is similar to learning a language and sketching is like joking in that language. In order to be able to joke uh, with a language, you have to know the language really well. So it's a sketching, it's shortcuts that you learn through drawing. Uh, but today, despite the, regardless of your experience with drawing and your level and your ability, you all will be able to do the sketch and I'll make sure of it. I'll take you step by step and show you how it is still possible to do without any drawing experience. But first, I'm gonna take you through a few things that you need to know in uh, sketching that will be very uh, relevant and indispensable for um, its, we call them tools or we call them vocabulary of drawing or sketching. And these tools are the line, uh, the shading, highlights, and perspective. So I'm going to give a little uh, show of all these things and I don't claim to introduce to you what line means because you all use lines. It's uh, obviously, uh, I don't claim to um, cre create a relation here. I um, understand you're familiar that line outlines and defines, but you may not know 
uh, to what degree the line has a power. It has a power to sculpt the form. So I'm going to show you what the line can do. For example, imagine uh, two tree trunks, and I'm going to draw them. identical tree trunks. So if I uh, use the line to define their volume, now it looks like we are looking at that tree trunk from below. We're looking up at it. And if I make opposite lines, now we're looking at this tree trunk from above. So I could draw here grass below it because that identifies our point of view down at it. And here I can draw uh, the top of the palm tree uh, because that's what you would expect above the tree. So they're no longer parallel. So I not only gave them volume, I also changed the point of view. So that's the power of line. Um, another example. Again, with a tree. If I made the branches going all in different directions, some of these branches are coming towards us and some are going away from us. But right now it's all looking kind of flat. So watch what you can do. You can make the branch come towards you, or you can make the branch go back away from you. So it's really powerful means of creating the sensation of reality, the sensation of dimension. So we're gonna use this trick today in our sketching. That's why I'm showing you how effective it is. So I call these lines arches or smiles. So smiles bring the form forward. Arches push the form away from us. Can you see that? If I make it wrong, watch what happens if I make a mistake and instead of uh, a smile, I put the arch here. Look how it wrong, how wrong it feels right away that the branch is going into the tree instead of towards us. And the same way, if I make this with smiles instead of arches, do you see how the branch kind of flattens itself coming, trying to come forward from behind the tree towards us. But um, the potency of this tool allows you not only make the branches rounded, but it also allows you to break the branch. Well, let me first show you how you can actually twist them. So the branch is coming towards us. Then watch what I am doing now. I just created a wave where it's coming towards us and then turning and goes back. So I can do this with any of the branches. I don't know if you can see this one, hopefully. how it creates a wave so you can make a really complex form with just that one trick anyway very fun we have that uh, as an exercise in our drawing course and uh, you don't need to recreate just uh, that just observe how it works and then another tool so that tool of the line really powerful as you see I'm going to show you one more little demonstration before I get to the shadow um, with the uh, human legs. So imagine two pairs of human legs, a person sitting 
watch how the line can potently, I'm just creating the edge of the shorts and the edge of the socks. And now the knees are coming towards us. Watch what happens now with the edge of the socks and the edge of the shorts. Now the knees are turned 180 degrees. So without changing anything in the drawing, I was able to turn the form to the, in the opposite direction. So the power of the line is, uh, should be well demonstrated in, in this exercise. So I'm gonna show you what uh, the shadow can do because we will be dealing with that in our drawing as well. So imagine the object, it's not an object really, it's just a circle and it's flat. But as soon as I add the shadow on it, which you very well know, probably, it becomes three-dimensional, it becomes a sphere. So I added what's called body shadow. Then the cast shadow, the shadow cast by the object onto the surface, defines the relationship of the object with the surface. So it, um, we artists say, shadows are information. So they're information about the direction of light, right? It's clear that the light is coming from there. It's uh, information about the strength of light, but also about how close the object is to the surface. Because if I do this, I just made a jump. And I can make a jump as high as I want. So I have this control over the space, which is relevant to uh, architectural design and um, landscape design because you guys deal with uh, perspective, texture, form, space, composition, balance, and all these issues. And so we use the tools in handmade drawings um, that allows us in sketching very quickly uh, express all that. Um, uh, I will show you uh, a few more things, how the shadow can help you um, create information. So imagine the tree, so, A tree on the surface. This tree is next to a slope. This tree is on a very textured surface. So shadow uh, allows me to create information about the environment around the tree. This means it's a flat cutout. It's not a tree. It's a cutout of a tree. So the shadow identifies that it's not a volume, but a flat shape. So something that would look like this. Another example. That shadow shows that the tree is next to some obstacle. For example, little fence. And here, what's going on here? The tree is not planted yet, but uh, being lowered by the crane to the ground. So that space shows that it's not quite there yet, but has about this much space above the earth. Uh, so that's that. And, and finally, one more example of the shadow. Imagine an object on the table. 
Imagine this is a book, for example, and the brush laying on the book. So it's absolutely clear. I don't really need the shadow. Can you guys see what I'm drawing or I'm drawing to? You really don't need to see shadow to understand what's going on. Um, it's a book and the brush on the book. Uh, no question about it. What else can it be? And with the shadow, I just simply can confirm that, that it is so. There you go. But watch this. I'm drawing again exactly the same thing. Brush or pen on the book. And with the shadow, I'm changing the information about the position of the book, of the uh, brush. I did not change anything in my drawing. I only changed the shadow. And uh, it changed completely what the brush is doing on top the, of the book. This end is touching the table when before it wasn't. So let's see. What else we can do? Can you believe it? That it's now touching the table with its opposite end. So the power of the shadow to provide information without changing anything in, in your drawing is something that we really don't know unless this demonstration reveals it to you, even though the shadows are doing that in front of us all day long. But it is um, uh, very difficult for us to uh, decipher that it's, this information is coming from the shadow. We think we just know. When we see this position of the brush actually in front of us, in reality, we think that we just know that. But it's actually the shadow that uh, lets our brain read into what is happening. So watch another scenario with the same simple tools of the brush on the book. The brush is not on the book. It is hovering above the book. And if that did not blow your mind enough, watch this. It's not a final demonstration, but one off. So all we need to do is change this thing. The brush is not above the book at all. It's next to the book. So the, uh, the information com that comes from the shadow has immense ability to change the scenario totally. And there are 10 more scenarios like this uh, with the same brush and the book, and none of them repeats any of this. So that's just enough for you to understand how effective it is. And uh, we can uh, play with our shadows to on our own drawing. And before we get to the drawing, one little thing that I wanted to remind you about, because as architects, you prob you're probably aware of how perspective works, uh, the, but perspective is very uh, counterintuitive tool that um, our brain is designed by nature not to see. So you have to learn to see perspective. And uh, it is very simply can be started with uh, connecting the corners and now you have three-dimensional space, interior. You have a room with the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. So if you want to create an exterior, you go exactly the same way 
And now this is the street and this are the buildings. And this is the street. So this will be the sidewalk. And So this is how reality is constructed through really simple cross in the beginning. And then from there, you can create absolutely any uh, shape in your drawing. So this is a simple example of perspective, one point, per point perspective. And we're, this class is not going to be about perspective, just a little reminder of um, importance of the vanishing point, importance of uh, distortion, because distortion is what creates the illusion of depth in the drawing. So with that, I'm going to switch uh, my screen to my paper. And uh, everybody uh, have your paper in front of you horizontally. And the first thing that we will need is a pencil and a ruler. And before we get to the drawing itself, let's first outline a little frame. So, so we will create the illusion of a window. It doesn't have to be perfect. It is not to um, show off. Uh, our first drawing is going to be lousy and i really insist on it being really really bad art because the way to uh, get to the effortlessness you have to allow yourself to make really bad drawing so we will make sure this first drawing is going to be really quick and really bad so we get um, to experiment to explore to try it to make all the mistakes that we possibly can make and all the mistakes are the best road to learning and to discovery instead of perfectionist style of trying to avoid the mistakes. This um, perfectionism, I mean, is really uh, quickly expelled by drawing. It is curable condition. Don't worry, uh, those of you who have it, it's uh, curable in a few days and drawing is great remedy for it. Perfectionism is not um, something that should be cherished, <coughs> excuse me, uh, because it's uh, simply resistance. Excuse me, I have to drink from my water. <clears throat> it's resistance, uh, meaning I'd rather not do it at all than do it badly. But um, the way to learn and the way to get better at things is by doing it badly. So nobody expects to grab a violin and start playing um, beautifully right away. You have to torture the ears of everybody around you in order to learn. So we don't even expect that. But um, when we draw, our ego wants it to be good from the very beginning. It judges us from the very beginning. It wants it to be pleasing to the eyes. So it shouldn't be. So in the beginning, we're going to make something that will be extremely not pleasing to the eyes. But it's very important to get it out of the system, to allow ourselves to draw as if we are um, creating directions to our own house. Like when you're showing someone, you just, uh, there's a road, you turn here, there's a big tree, there's my house. So you're never thinking about uh, quality when you do that. So we will uh, try to get to the same level of imperfection. So when you have your drawing, uh, I mean, your image, your printed image in front of you, so I will have them side by side. See, I hope you see both. And um, we will use a ruler to create a trellis, so to speak, for our sketching. So before we get to um, sketching all the details, we want to uh, focus on the big picture. And one of the most important uh, steps in drawing or sketching, when you're sketching from observation or you're sketching from your mind, is not to be um, distracted by the 
details. So you have to learn not to see them. You have to learn to ignore them. So our first step is going to be separating the sky from the building. So make that line and you might be wondering like where should that line be? It should be at the point of all this um, uh, long details or should be at the base of them at the top of the level that you would see if you squinted. So if you squint, that's the level. But if you make it a little bit lower or a little bit higher, it does not matter because the photographer could have done that. He happened to make that composition, but he could have moved the camera slightly up and then there would be less of the sky or slightly down, there would be more of the sky. So it, it, is, it, it really doesn't matter. Now, let's make a line uh, below that uh, just a little bit, maybe a thumb with another line. Make it quickly. If the lines are not ideal and not perfectly parallel, great. Rejoice. You're beginning to expel your perfectionist. And then uh, another line that would be maybe half of the top belt down like this. You see? So we identified this area here, then the area that will contain all of these shadows. Then uh, down, we go down with our ruler and make, that's not quite the center of the page, but a little below the center. Again, it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, make a second line there can be the same as um, above or a little thinner. Again, it doesn't matter. In below at the bottom, we will trim another line. So it has very little uh, resemblance to our drawing, but as I said, it's a trellis on which we will put all these vines of our sketch. So next thing that we will do, we'll make two uh, all of these lines going into the perspective and to some vanishing point. We're not going to worry about that because we will instead focus on these two triangles, these thin triangles of the negative space. See that triangle here and this triangle right here. So let's start that. Starting from the bottom corner of our paper and carve that out like this. Give this angle a little bit more than on the picture. Don't worry about that. It means you uh, are looking from a lower point of view. So you cannot really make mistakes. I mean, not that you can't. You can make mistakes, but it's impossible to make mistakes. Any mistakes are going to simply change the, um, your view. And then we're going to do the same thing. We'll make these lines into a double line on the side and another on the side. All these lines could be uh, done very uh, subtly without any pressure. So I'm using 6B pencil to make it visible for you, but you can make them very, very light because we really don't need them to be visible. But if they're visible, no problem at all. And now we need to divide this space uh, in half. There's no column in the middle, but what there is in the middle is that coat of arms, coat of arms, and the figure. So we will identify the center. And if my center is not exactly in the middle, and if that line is not exactly vertical, I'm not going to be worried about it and let it happen. So now we can make divisions into two rows and two more rows here. So how can we do that? We just simply eyeball it. You can use a ruler if you want 
all the way to the top. Remember, they have to kind of go angle gradually towards the straight line in the center. So they're kind of tapering out. There. So see how many uh, of these rectangles we have? Five, right? One, two, three in the middle, four, five. That's what we want. So uh, without any more drawing with a pencil, we're going to get our marker. And I'm going to show you what it means to make a really bad drawing. So you probably think, ah, oh, you don't need to show me that. I can do that really well myself. But uh, it is important to, uh, to watch me do that because it will give you permission to, uh, to do things quickly and imperfectly. So the coat of arms, right? That is in the center. So in the center, we have this uh, above the top line, the first line that we did, we have this shape. So it is like U shape with a straight line across. So make that thick U shape sitting on that line. And then on top of that U shape, make a star, well, first a circle and then a star uh, really quickly. Don't try to make it exactly just something that kind of kind of resembles it. And uh, with the lines that we created, those columns, remember the tree, the palm tree that we're looking up at? We are going to use that principle to create volume. So arches, they're like arches, very rounded arches. Very imperfect, but remember, this is not drawing. This is a sketch, and the sketch allows you to uh, not to be judged with the same quality. So this is where the line is going to be the widest. This is where that shelf, where we have the shadow, will um, will be after we get a little bit more done. So on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. And on top of that thing, gonna make in the same direction, we will have that, that icicle, upside down icicle, something that kind of resembles it. Uh, let's make this line now, every time it goes over the column, make a little jump. Goes over the column, makes a little jump. At the top of that, uh, there will be that architectural element right there. And in between, uh, there's all these swirls that you can add that looks just like this. You see? Look at, not at my drawing, but at your picture for that. And in the middle, there's a little, little tower. So it's very approximately uh, what we're looking at. And we'll just leave it at that. Uh, on both sides, there are more of the edge. So before we do anything else, we'll dip our brush in our coffee or tea or blue color and simply create the blue sky. So we want to distinguish the building 
from the space. Remember, our drawing is supposed to be lousy. So don't uh, worry about quality of your lines or your color. It could be done very quickly, as quickly as you can. And if the watercolor doesn't give you uh, perfectly the same tonality, if it kind of uh, darker in some places and lighter in other places, fine, it's going to look like maybe clouds. In the sky. So now we have uh, the division between, between the sky and the building. So let's make now this line uh, here with what kind of elements are there. It's really hard to see, but there are faces, there are probably lions or, or something. We don't have to identify it, we just make it into something that means it is really complex there. And then the next line, you see it made of little squares. So we can define that and you see what I'm doing with just lines? I'm making these little squares. In my drawing, they're not really squares, they're just quick marks. Okay, then each of the columns is very curly. So I'm making it curly at the top of each column. The line that we made in the middle, let's deal with that line first. Up, every time it meets the column, our marker jumps up every time it goes straight then it meets the column it goes up meets the column it goes up and so on we can make a second line parallel to that doing exactly the same thing doesn't have to be Perfect. Remember, bad drawing. If I am not able to make a bad drawing, sorry, but uh, you're supposed to. I'm trying. Um, how are you guys doing? I hope you're catching up. You can unmute yourself and very quickly give me uh, your feedback. Are you able to uh, be playful with it? Are you able to make a bad drawing. This is what the most important, or you striving for quality. If you're striving for quality, if you're trying to make a good drawing, it's very easy to get your ego uh, frustrated. So you have to say, I am playing, this is unimportant because it's our first uh, trial and error. This is where we want to get it as quickly as possible and as badly as possible. Because as Leon Baptiste Alberti said, nothing is at the same time both new and perfect. So if you feel that you are struggling or frustrated, it means you are trying to make a good drawing. Give it up. The first one is not going to be good. Um, okay, let's go to the coats of arm. Uh, we have two in one in the middle. Let's draw that one. Something. It looks like a heart, kind of. And then two more here. Make them U shape. Don't worry about coat of arm. You can always add that uh, point to them. Just two letters U. And then uh, some kind of uh, crown on top of it. That coat of arm in the middle, there are stripes in it. You can do that. Another little flag, maybe with a cross, little wings on the sides, 
and something ident uh, unidentifiable above and some ornate stuff around it. It's very ornate, hard to understand. So it's sort of like this. Remember, we're making um, uh, directions to our house uh, and it's very approximate, kind of looks like that. What is this? I have no idea. There's some marks, so I'm just making those marks. And um, the columns themselves look like they're lines with the little ornate vertical uh, bar leaves. So there and there. It's like we're imitating almost hieroglyphs. If you can't uh, read Japanese and you just uh, fake in it, that would be like that. So in the, below that belt in the middle, let's make that little something that looks like it is ornate very quickly. It's almost like writing. And then on two sides above, uh, mm, in the two rectangles on the sides, those two rectangles, it looks like some really complex construction of organic forms. So it has uh, some curly shapes of some kind and some spine in the middle. So there's something that looks like this. Uh, that's good enough. This, we cannot see anything there. Don't have to even draw anything. And in that triangle, it looks empty. So we just leave it alone. And now uh, let's go to the figure. So we have this three, uh, let's start with the columns. The columns, just like above, there's something undistinguishable inside of them. We'll just make that. Please be silly. You cannot be intelligent. You cannot uh, maintain your um, mindfulness and do this. You have to play. You have to allow yourself to do uh, uh, it, it silly. Um, you'll see it's like a shortcut to ske sketching. Okay, and even though these arches have such a complex shape of a seashell, in, the, in the, their general geometry, they're just arches. So we just make arch, another, and another, three ar arches. And the figures. Don't you know, don't you have to know how to draw humans in order to draw those three figures? No, you don't. You can draw snowmen on legs, like this one would be one, two, three, and two legs. Good enough. Then he's holding something, we can give it to him. And then, remember how we were hugging uh, on the tree trunks? Those lines are not straight. So if you make them rounded, you will be able to create that kind of effect of hugging of the seashell. So that person is even easier to do. It's not a snowman, it's a head and then the body. A couple of folds, he's holding similar thing and um, don't have to worry about facial features, the hand, and then the lines around him. They're standing on something, fine, there it is. And this person, uh, the head, a square body, two legs, arms, the feast, the cape, and the thing he's standing on, the lines behind him to create that little niche. And then if you want, you can do that, the circle on the side, that's easy. The circle and the circle and the person inside, the head and the body, nothing is easier than that. And what else is there? Just draw whatever you see. It's very, very ornate. It's very complex. There's, I see the crisscross there. Don't worry about it being symmetrical and definitely don't draw a boat. Don't draw that uh, uh, ship there with uh, 
the sails. Instead, just draw the lines and the triangle, and that will identify the ship. Remember, we are uh, sketching and all this ornate stuff, you just make it curly, like curly hair around it. Almost everything here is just so curly and so complex. On top of that column, it's curlier than what we did, how we made it. It's more ornate, so add more ornate stuff. Do you, do you follow, you guys? So in the middle of the top of the coat arm, there's a cross, easy to do. There's some marks here, diagonal lines here, little marks here, and probably a boat. There you go. So in the bottom, same principle. We make straight line between the columns. As soon as we encounter the column, we make a little jump, straight, then jump up, straight, then jump up, straight, then jump straight and then round. And it's very ornate in the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to clarify everything by means of washes. So we created a huge mess, a huge spider web of uh, lines. Now our wash which we can uh, will use a brown color or you can use black if you want but you have to make your color uh, not solid black but translucent so watered down that's a color of the wash you see i am using a lot of water and paint. You can make it brown, that works. You can make it, you can mix brown and blue into this color of the shadow. You see how it creates kind of muddyish brown? Um, doesn't matter, it works, but it, you have to have it consistent. If you choose just plain brown from your watercolor set, just use that. So here's how we do it. Now you have to attentively look at your picture. And you have to squint to identify those areas of shadow because the areas of shadow, when you squint, it doesn't allow you to see the distinct edge between the column and the cast shadow from the column, between the shadow on the figure and behind the figure. So shadow, the shadow swallows the details inside of it and you have to let it get uh, done by your wash. So let's say, we'll start with uh, that column. On the side, where's the light coming from? The light is obviously coming from the left. So it means that on the right side of everything, there will be a shadow. So we're just making that transparent and Uh, messy shadow. You see how it embraces the circle and goes down towards the line on the center. It's the shadow next to that column and the cast shadow that goes around the coat of arms. next to the column it casts further the entire arch is in the shadow the arm is in the shadow What about the shadow on that horizontal um, architectural element? 
yeah, we see those squares, they remain white, so we keep them white, putting the shadow, the wash, underneath them on every segment, and the wash above every segment. Do you see how it's becoming very three-dimensional? It kind of takes care of that, uh, brings clarity to everything, actually. So the very last side, you can almost entirely cover with your wash. You don't even have to worry about any of the details. You can if you want to, but remember the sketch is not drawing. Drawing uh, is something where you may want to be more precise and the sketch, you don't want to be precise. You want to be ruthless, careless. It's so fun to be careless. It's so fun to allow yourself to uh, create bad art. Because when you look at your bad drawing uh, from the distance, you cannot see it from close up. From close up, everything looks bad. Even really good drawings look bad uh, because our internal critic sees the every little detail. You have to put it uh, slightly away uh, at the distance to be able to judge it. So the artists know that very well, that judging a painting that's on the easel or drawing that's on your desk in front of you is impossible. You will never be happy if you do. So you just turn the judge off. Don't judge. So each of these columns has this really complex shadow. The shadow, remember squinting, is very helpful to see it. This shadow is wider, it means the um, that area is more recessed or the column protruding further up towards us but we are not worrying about that we're just simply paying attention to the width of the shadow see the shadow here is quite thin it's quite thin but here it's wider and deeper so there is the shadow here what about the arches there's some shadow next to the arch. The entire arch is in the shadow, or almost entire. And then around the figure. So see the big picture. Remember, try not to see the details. The details are just distractions. If you uh, make the sketch with all of the refinement and all of the details, it's not a sketch, it's a drawing. And drawings take, take time. But if you are after a quick sketch, you have to allow uh, yourself to do all the shortcuts. So here is the third arch. The head is highlighted, the shoulder is highlighted, but the, ar the arm is swallowed by the shadow can see one leg, cannot see the other, we can let it disappear. And do we even want any more in this? Well, we could uh, define uh, some shadows in the bottom part of that freeze in the very bottom, but And the final shadow up at the top of the coat of arms, there. Now it is protruding. Okay. So let's look at the um, uh, how everybody is uh, doing because we're going to do a very quick second drawing. Anyone who wants to show your drawing, raise your hand and I will spotlight you. So we will look at, uh, okay, 
somebody who is super, super unhappy with your drawing? Anybody who is unhappy? Okay, Johanna, you are on. Please, uh, please you mute it, uh, unmute yourself and show us your drawing. Let's see what Hi. you did. Um, I'm Johanna and I am a perfectionist, so I'm trying to cure it. Um, wow. Okay, so you're saying you're unhappy with this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's the first time I let myself draw a bad or sketch a bad drawing or paint or sketch. So. Well, I, Johanna, yeah, I have to uh, tell you, you actually failed today because you made a good drawing. Remember, <laughs> Why? What? I asked. This is I terrible. Asked that drawing. You didn't. You didn't. It's but look at all the squigglies. Well, yeah, but you cannot put it to the same scrutiny as the drawing. Remember, the sketch has to, anybody who knows San Diego Museum of Art, they will look at it and say, yeah, that's the facade of our museum in San Diego. So it absolutely uh, brilliantly done. It is so three-dimensional. Johanna, you haven't seen your drawing from the distance. So you have to give yourself, you have to give the drawing respect of some space. And 48 hours, okay. it's also really important. 48 hours, okay. Well, first failure we saw, <laughs> but not do bad job that I, yeah. uh, Wow. Yeah. Anybody else did bad job? Well, really, really bad job. Bad. It's like that was not a good example <laughs> of bad job. This is, a, uh, this is Kathleen's um, drawing. If you want to um, show Tracy and Kathleen. Okay, let's see Tracy and Kathleen. Kathleen, let's see. It's actually Kathleen's drawing, and it's really done well. Let's see if I can get it up to the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are you showing us this masterpieces? We want to see <laughs> drawing, please, everybody. Really, really. I mean, add wash to this that is a little bit in more contrast. You don't have to play safe with a wash. It doesn't have to be like translucent smoke. You oh, I was using coffee. My, my coffee was not strong enough this morning. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> leave and learn. So in, uh, if you did it with, uh, with coffee, you had to use tiny bit of water and a lot of coffee. I know. <laughs> watercolor. But anyway. you can also do uh, a second uh, round with a second time, a second wash on top of it, and it will increase the color, increase the tonality. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. it is so beautiful and elegant. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's not, it's not accepted as bad. Let's see somebody who really, really, really made it bad. I want to see one of those. Okay, Jesus. And who are we? Jackie. 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 Okay, what are you showing us? Good or bad? Jackie, you muted. Can you unmute? So, yeah, that's, that's mine. I don't know if you can see the detail at all, but. No, we see all the details precisely. Nice, we see the uh, perspective, perfect perspective. We see all of the uh, architectural elements. It's a beautiful sketch and very three-dimensional. Are you using, uh, Jackie, are you using watercolor or coffee? Um, I used watercolor. Watercolor, okay, great, wow. Beautiful. Uh, you have, you're getting an F though, because you're not showing us bad drawing. Bad drawing when you're not succeeding in that looking like a museum of uh, uh, San Diego Museum of Art and it doesn't look three-dimensional. Your looks three-dimensional, totally recognizable and very elegant actually. I love the uh, delicateness of your touch, Jackie. You have very, very delicate touch. Like, you see how my touch is very intense. It like, comes with the character. And your, your touch is very um, nuanced and subtle. So I, I think you have more confidence. Mine was like less confident lines. <laughs> really, my, my marker was thicker. I don't know. But it is beautiful. I love your marker that is so thin. This uh, is beautiful supplies you guys have. I, I, I like your marker better than what I'm using. I wish I got it back. <laughs> Can we have everybody oh, hold sorry. those up real quick? Say it again. I said, should we have everybody hold theirs up real quick? Ooh, let's do that. Let's do that. You guys, okay. please turn, turn your camera 
on everyone and hold your sketch. Oh my God. Hold it up, hold it up. Uh, yeah, Jennifer, Brand, uh, Nancy, Lorena, James, please turn your cameras on. We're gonna wait, hold it up, hold it up, everybody. Wow, I cannot believe the drawing. I was told that you wanna learn to sketch, but you guys sketch. Amy, where's your drawing? Amy, will yeah, Amy. hold it up, hold it up. Be proud. Jin, Laura, Virginia. David, where's your sketch? We want to see it. Oh my gosh. Everybody. One. Uh, excuse me? Did, did we have to draw that picture or we could uh, draw another one? No, we will uh, draw another one really fast. Uh, but oh, because but I, do, I, do, I do another picture. One hold second. up, hold up. No, this same exact picture. We're going to draw from the same picture, but we want to have a screenshot with everyone holding your sketches. Hold it, Jackie, Jackie. Hold it up. One, two, three, smile. Fantastic. Okay, not everybody. We didn't see everybody's uh, drawing. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time because uh, the first time is uh, to make all the possible mistakes. On the second time, we want to see how nothing, what we considered mistakes, actually were mistakes. They were just the beginning, the appearance, the emergence of your style. So we want more of that. So this time, if you want to use a ruler and do that uh, trellis again, you can. Uh, if you guys, some of you feel that you did your best, don't rest on laurels, uh, do it again. And the good thing about this, when this class is over, you will be able to continue uh, drawing because you'll have your picture and you'll have all your step-by-step -step, uh, directions. So you can, if you want to do it, whatever that means better. But remember, we don't want to turn it into a drawing. We want to learn how to sketch. We have to learn to be imperfect. This is so difficult for all of us, perfectionists and adults. Uh, it's much easier to be perfect, to take our time, to make superb drawing uh, and work on it forever, but doing it badly and quickly, it really requires for you to dismantle that perfectionist, to tell your internal critic to go for a little walk, and um, in the meantime, do something really playfully. So I'm going to do it much faster this time. So I don't need much of the, in the drawing. I want to just carve that perspective from the angular position of the edges more than anything. Define perhaps my center. and the edges and all the rest we can do by hand. I want to get you guys started on this. We don't want to finish this uh, now. Uh, it's really uh, will be useful for you to uh, do it on your own without my voice nagging you to do a bad job and really uh, try to um, create something that you're not proud of. Can you do that? Because we always in our life uh, striving to impress people. We're striving to impress ourselves and do really good job. Can you be childish? 
can you be uh, effortless? Can you be careless? Can you be ruthless? Try that. And um, since we have only 15 minutes left, I really want, instead of going for, um, we could do it quickly, but instead I think it would be much more useful for uh, us to see and, and spotlight some of you and talk about your experience and also see if you have any questions because I'm afraid, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm afraid that we will run out of time and we won't uh, have time for questions and answers. Um, let's, let's do that. I'm going to take uh, your questions now if you have any or if you would like to um, talk about your experience today, how did you feel about the drawing and were you able to shift to uh, from a perfectionist, from being serious, doing it with a serious face to be smiling and playing and kind of like, ah, whatever. Uh, it's not going to be good anyway, so I don't care. This is the state of mind of uh, somebody who is sketching. You don't care. At the same time, you do. It's like interesting yin and yang, two in one, when you care and don't at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, please raise your hand of those of you who would like to talk about the experience, who maybe experienced some breakthrough in what you did today. Um, Jesus. Um, do you usually use uh, more than one uh, pen weight when you sketch, or is it only one to so just try and do something quick? Well, the word trying, it actually doesn't belong with sketching. So when you say trying, you already don't mean sketching, means that something quickly that you do in front of the client, wanting to show them your idea, and so it looks like what you're thinking, and meets their um, idea, so they can recognize what you did but you really don't have uh, half a day to do it in front of them. So you have to do it quickly, but very expressively. Um, that I would love to uh, see uh, your drawing. Wow, look at that. That is so beautiful. I, is it satisfying or was it satisfying? How do you feel about your drawing? How do you feel about the whole experience? Were you able to undo the perfectionist? Because when you are doing the sketching, you definitely don't switch between markers. You just do, right. just you definitely use one or a pencil or a pen, or ballpoint pen or whatever you have at hand or charcoal and then smudge the shadows with your fingers. So how else can you do it imperfectly? So the uh, definitely speed is one of the elements that's really important to shift to this. I don't care. I'm not going to be judged. I just want it to be very expressive and I want to be understood. Right. I, I actually like to draw like people's faces. So that's always very perfect. So this was a cool experiment just to be free with myself and not really care about having a perfect round edge. So I appreciate the the freeing style. <laughs> okay, and your drawing is beautiful, amazing. You can actually frame that and it will start <laughs> growing on you. And I love the way you did the sky. You really allowed yourself it to be imperfect in every way. Anybody else, please raise your hand if you want to speak. I would love to hear from uh, several of you uh, and see your drawings in the close up. David. You're on. But you're, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. It's in the upper right uh, corner of your screen, David. In mine, it's okay. It's bottom left in mine. The little mic uh, icon, do you see the little mic icon there? David, just show us, show us your drawing. 
Wow, that is so amazing. Oh my gosh, I love that you used violet. Do you use violet uh, watercolor of uh, that was so interesting. Um, and you made it twilight, the Museum of San Diego in twilight or moonlit. So, okay, when you find that mic, we would love to hear from you. Let me get to the next person. Anybody else? Okay, Minnie, you are on. You're on. Hello. Hello. So, I kind of like that my ink bled through, so it made the shadows more interesting. Ah, yes, yes. So your ink was not water uh, resistant, right? Yeah, I don't think it was. Okay, great. But do you see how the, um, how, do you see how good your drawing is, first of all? I guess. <laughs> you, have I to give like it time. you have to give it time and you have to give it space to appreciate it. Uh, uh, but uh, what I love that you completely let go and ju just made um, very, very quick uh, squiggles resembling all these shapes. And the shapes are there, completely recognizable. Everything is superb. Everything is so three-dimensional. So the biggest takeaway that I wanted to emphasize for everyone, Minnie, I love your drawing. I love your sketch. Uh -huh. It's brilliant. But the biggest takeaway is that you can make huge mess in your sketch. And then with washes, you create clarity. You create emphasis of volumes and cast shadows and uh, the background, the negative space, and everything kind of becomes orderly. Everything becomes uh, nice and clear. So from messy to orderly, by means of washes. Anybody else? Thank you, Mini. Raise your hand, you guys. David's here. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Excellent. Well, this is the first time I've really let go and, and sketched like this, a, you know, an architectural element in a while, but it takes me back to college days of uh, being very loose and doing a uh, 10 second, 15 second, 30 second, one minute sketches that are just uh, the essence of the architecture and really just kind of capture the, the, the feel and the aesthetic of, of the whatever it is that you're drawing. And uh, this is really good. I got the perspective off a little bit, but uh, I think it, uh, really just, uh, I attribute that to just kind of being loose and really not uh, thinking too much about it. but. Uh, you know, the, the whole idea of not being a perfectionist when you're sketching is really the key and just really letting your hand and your eye go and, and uh, capturing that, uh, that feel of, of what it is that you're sketching. It, uh, it's really kind of emotive in terms of the, uh, 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 what you produce from what you see from, from eye to hand and, and how you uh, interpret it and how you uh, uh, draw it. Really brilliant brilliantly said letting go this is it this is it, the key really for to be able to sketch uh have your have your guard down and um play and have fun with it so you cannot be serious and do sketching okay tracy and kathleen emphasize on that you're a great teacher because you tell us it's okay you know, it's okay if it's not good. And then that, when you say that, then you relax. We relax and then it's, it turns out fine. Well, thank you very much. Uh, do you see that uh, when I asked you to make bad drawing, uh, nobody really successfully made bad drawing? I haven't seen uh, that well. so far. <laughs> Everyone's sketch is superb. Nobody failed. Uh, but it certainly takes practice to become comfortable, to be uncomfortable, to be uh, comfortable um, about not making a perfect drawing, which, is mean, which means sketching. So um, practice. Mm -hmm. So you have your supplies. These are perfect supplies mm -hmm. to practice. Uh, anybody else? I love the feedback. 
the feedback that we're getting is so interesting because it's very unique to you how you experience this uh, being imperfect. So that's what we would like to hear. Uh, everyone has their own flavor of what it means to let go, what it means to be in the moment and enjoy the moment no matter what you are uh, seeing uh, in terms of the product because nothing is at the same time both new and perfect. Anybody else would like to, uh, Morgan, would you like to talk about your experience? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, I'm used to drawing imperfect, so that wasn't a challenge for me. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a drawer, so I like these little lessons. I appreciate <laughs> your guidance today, because I, I do not draw as often as I should. I would like to, so mm -hmm. it's always oh. fun for a little push. Perfect. So beautiful, so yeah. wonderful. Yeah, you got it. The perspective is superb. You see how the ruler provided that trellis, then you can do all kind of crazy stuff on it. And you cannot fail. It's like fail proof uh, uh, method for drawing. So the washer certainly is great fun because you, with the brush and water, you, you can make it very loose. And at the same time, it kind of gathers everything to a very uh, sturdy looking architectural, very solid, very substantial looking building. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Who else? Well, we have a few minutes, uh, and I would love to hear a couple. Okay, Joe. Joe, you are in hey. the spotlight. Hey. I really liked your reminder of um, letting go of ego and how that is associated with perfectionism because it's not ultimately about what about you and your sketching it's about what you're trying to understand about what you're sketching and so I really like that um, reminder and that point you made thank you thank you the uh, now I want to disclose to you uh, all why I chose this picture um, this picture is incredibly complex when you look at this facade you think how in the world is it possible to do in 15 minutes it is impossible or if it's possible for somebody else it's certainly not possible for me so i wanted your ego your internal critic to say that first to you and then you start with that message like oh my god i'm gonna fail today and some of you guys who didn't turn your screen on maybe felt that you cannot show what you did because it's just beyond uh but um give it time I, I cannot emphasize it enough how important it is to uh, be kind to yourself when you're doing something quickly and when you're sketching, you cannot put it to the same scrutiny as your long, well-planned project or drawing. The sketch is not judged the same way. It's judged that is it emotional? Is it interesting? Is it expressive? Is it uh, temperamental? It, was it fun to do? So maybe it is about journey, not about the destination, even though the destination is uh, the result that you're showing are uh, fantastic. I love how completely different everybody's drawings are, even though we did it from exactly the same picture, everyone following exactly the same steps, identical steps, and everybody's result is totally, totally unique and different. And that is what I think is the most precious about you guys. So we have a couple of more minutes. Uh, if one more person would like to uh, show off, <laughs> no, not show off, wrong expression, uh, talk about your experience. I really would like to see how were you able to shift from self-judgmental self to uh, being able to let go and do it with joy. Anyone? Matthew, what about you? I was just gonna unmute myself. <laughs> um, so I'm an engineer, civil engineer. So this is a really cool experience just because 
everything that I do for work is based off standards. There's no re really no um, creativity involved with it, but yeah, it was a pretty fun um, thing to do. And I thought it was sort of therapeutic in a way, just because I am a perfectionist. So it was a little challenging to just scribble everywhere. But um, yeah, I was happy with my result. What Matthew just said, Matthew, your drawing is fantastic. Uh, Thank you. What Matthew just said is the key, it's therapeutic. It cures perfectionism because it's condition that needs to be cured. It's not, you don't hold on to it, let go of it. Uh, you will do better without it. But when you need to, it's very easy to get back to uh, doing good job. But once in a while, you can play. Maybe you need a glass of red wine before you do this exercise next time. I don't know. But I think just simply um, challenging yourself with limiting the time and giving yourself that wash and the looseness and also that attitude, I don't care. It's, it's really precious. So I wanted to tell everyone that if you want to uh, uh, experience drawing uh, and, uh, with a little different project, we have a free class on first Saturday of every month and you can mark your calendar. It's first Saturday of every month on Primo Materia online um, at 12 p.m. And you all are welcome to it. I will also include it in my uh, email to you um, after this class and remind you about it. But you all, all are welcome to come and it will be slightly different experience, but very similar, where you have a lot of fun in that um, online uh, lesson where you only need a piece of paper and a pencil. That's all. But it is uh, something that can totally shift you on the other side forever to become comfortable with drawing for life. And um, thank you so much, everybody. I really enjoyed working with you today. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, email me uh, or text us or leave your reviews. That would be great because not everybody got to speak today, but in your review, you can leave your um, uh, uh, words, your uh, opinion. Um, it, uh, it would be very interesting for us to read. And I wanted to thank everyone for participating, for your trust in me and uh, in the organizer uh, for coming to the class and uh, doing this amazing job of letting go. Oh yeah, if I can, thank you so, so much. This was an amazing class. And we, if anybody's willing, we would love to share what we drew as a group on uh, social media. So I know we have some screenshots, but if you're willing to share us what you actually drew, please email it to Tracy. Um, and we're gonna actually kind of showcase what we all did today. Because um, everybody's sketches were really good, even if you think they're not, they're amazing. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, this was such a good class. You did a really good job. Thank you. What a great idea, everybody. Yes, I can't wait to see everyone's sketches. Uh, sketches so fun. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope to see you again soon. Oh yeah, and sorry, email, uh, Tracy's putting the email in the comments if you don't know where to send it. Ah, very good, in the chat, right? Yep. Very good. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Thanks, Olya. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Amy. Bye. Thank you, sponsor. Thank you, Amy. We love our stuff. Thank you. Bye. Bye.